Okay, it's Reflections Day B. So, if I asked you to reflect something, I'd need to tell you what to reflect. Because if I just said this, I have told you to move something somewhere, but I haven't told you what to move. I haven't told you whether I want you to do the square root and move it, or the x squared and move it, or the square root and move it, or maybe it's just a squiggle and move it. But so far, you should at least know that it's moved somewhere. Would you please write down the two things that I've told you to do? Like maybe I told you to do a horizontal reflection and a move to the right of seven. Tell me what the two things are that I told you to do. I gave you a little dumb saying to remember this by. And you should be picturing dwarfs walking along in the woods. I vote. Hi, Bo. It's up to where we go. What on earth am I talking about? Yes? Horizontal on the inside and vertical on the outside. So hopefully you knew that this was a horizontal move. Now, we really don't have to say horizontal move of right three because there's only one way to move to the right three. How many of you had to the right three? Good. I'm curious, how many of you started with that? Good, because the order does matter, and I recommend starting on the inside. All right, now let's move to the plus seven. That's up seven. Now, some of you might be disturbed by this whole order matters thing. In this case, with these two things, the order really wouldn't matter. That's kind of like saying three plus seven. Do you get, when it's that simple, I can reverse it and say seven plus three, and it'd be the same thing. Okay, so some problems are that simple where you can't really mess it up. But on this problem I'm about to show you, I would say you have to do it in the right order. Or you won't possibly get it right. So that it has an absolute value in it. What shape is that? Is that a parabola? No, what's it kind of look like? A V shape. Good. So if that's a V-shape, now I went and did two reflections on it, and I moved it. Would you please tell me, what do you think should be first? A, B, C, or D? How about this? Which two letters can you narrow it down to right away? B and C. Okay, now, remember me telling you you can't trust the stuff on the inside? So then here's the tough choice. Kids get this mixed up in their head, and they think they're picking between multiply and add. B and C is not a choice between multiply or add. Do you see the parentheses? Do you get that the normal order makes you do parentheses first? Oh, we're on the inside, where everything's backwards land, opposite of what you'd think. So parentheses are normally first, so parentheses are not first. You should have chosen B is the first thing you do. How many of you knew that? Good. Okay. Now, if B is first, well, then what has to be second? C. Good. And then there's A and D left. Of the two things on the outside, can you trust things on the outside? Yes. So, therefore, we can trust and do it in the right order. What should be first? This minus 8 or the minus in the front? A. The A. The minus in the front. Because that's like a negative 1 times this. Don't forget that that really means multiply up in front there. Okay, so multiply comes before subtract, so A comes before D. Final answer, B should have been first, then C, and then A, and then D in this problem. Okay, you go to the inside first. Of the inside choices, you do in the opposite of normal order. It, it, it definitely is a mind bender, but once you get this straight, you're good for about two years because this class and pre-calc uses that same method of determining what should be first. You start on the inside and do them in the opposite of normal order. Then you can move to the outside and it's all normal. You do things normally on the outside. Okay, so let's see if you can uh, actually get credit for one here. Imagine for a moment that you had a question like this. Here is an equation. in another negative 
making it squared. I would like you to tell me what in two, three, four things, thank you, in order, tell me, what should you do first? Like, let's say you think you're supposed to do a vertical reflection first. Okay, you'd write vertical reflection for number one then. There's four things. Use the official names. You cannot use the word flip. There's an official word for flip. You should be using words like horizontal and vertical. And up and right and left are fine. You don't have to get fancy when we're talking about up or down or left or right. In the right order, what should be done here? I'll pause for a sec. Okay, I hope you started on the inside. And then your choices were to either do this thing or that thing. Parentheses are normally first. So they're not first. You should have started with this right here. So that is on the inside. How can I tell? That one's free. It's on the outside of the jail bars. The other one is inside jail. So it's stuck on the inside. That is a horizontal on the inside. And horizontal, what's the official word for a flip? Reflect. Horizontal reflection. Raise your hand if you have that one right. Awesome. Next one. The other thing, which is the four, and that's left four. The third thing, you move to the outside. Of the choices on the outside, there's the that thing or that thing. You are supposed to do the negative in front first because it's a multiply by negative one. That is a outside, so it's a vo. Though, both these are vertical, a vertical reflect, and the last thing is a up five. You could have gotten fancy and talked about vertical out there too, but it's just up five is fine. Raise your hand if you had those in the perfect order. All right, you're learning as long as you can keep this in your head. We get learning certain themes that will stick with you for a long time. Any function that you learn from now on, if you're on the inside with the x, you can't trust it. You do opposite opposite things. It seems like you multiply it by 2. You don't. You cut it in half. It seems like you go to the right. You actually go to the left. And the other theme is stuff on the outside is vertical, and you can trust it. All right. So now, let's actually do this to a little picture. Imagine for a moment that you started with an x squared. I want you to try to do all of those things to the little parabola and sketch. Notice I didn't say you had to graph. Sketch where you think this thing would be when it was all done. I'll pause while you give that a shot. Okay, so if... You were taking your little parabola and moving them around. I hope you started with the parabola right about there. Then I hope you did a horizontal reflection and absolutely nothing happened. Do you get on a horizontal reflection on a parabola? Hey, it wouldn't even do anything? Doesn't go anywhere. Okay, then what? What's the second step? Left four. And then what? Vertical reflect. So that makes it go like this. And the last thing? Up five. Yours should look something like that. Raise your hand if your sketch is in the right general neighborhood. Okay, good. I think you're learning this stuff. Now, one more kind you have to learn how to reflect, and this is the hardest of them all, of course. Save the hardest for last. If you have a shape that's like this, can you imagine how challenging it is to reflect it left-right? Up-down isn't even, well, it's, it's still hard. If you have a random shape and you have to reflect it left, right, or up, down, let me give you advice on how that would work. I would take the corners and think of the dots. Any individual dot isn't that hard to reflect. Just think about it that way. Just focus on this dot right here. If you have to reflect that left, right, do you get where it should go? That's pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, so you just have to move it over to this other side. And then this dot on the right, I just have to move him over to the other side this way. Each individual dot isn't that hard. So you move all the dots and then you connect the dots, just like back to the elementary school when you had your 
some of your first assignments, connecting the dots. All right, so I'm going to give you one like that. It's not quite as nasty as that. I'll start with a little bit easier one. And imagine it's a baseball cap looking thing like this. I would like you, instead of just telling you reflect it this way, reflect it that way in words, I'm going to tell you with a function. I want you to try to do the right kind of reflection on this thing. And then it's a little move also. And see if you know where the baseball cap ends up. Give this one a shot. This time I'm going to have you compare the person directly across from you, rows one and two. I'll, I'll hook you up with people right now to have a partner. Right. Okay, so first step is the inside. That is a what reflection? Horizontal. Okay, so that means baseball cap needs to be kind of like rotated. It's almost as if it got stuck right here, and then it rotates this way, and this part rotates that way, and your ball cap turns around and looks like, I'll do it in green this time, there, and now where do I got to move them? Up two, should be like that, raise your hand if you had it right, okay good, now let's try one that's harder, see if you can handle this one, this one's going to be a vertical reflect on the proverb proverbial lightning bolt. I started out with harder, but not impossible by any means. You can tell which way I want you to reflect it by that little negative and where it is. Pause for a second while you give that a try. So, here's where it should go. I'll make it green now. Now, be, be critical with yourself here. I think you should move dots. Do you get that I only need to move those two dots? Why am I not moving the blue dots? They're already touching, and they their height right now is zero. That's a way to think of this. You're doing the opposite of the... Isn't f of x kind of like y? It's like the opposite of y, so your y has to turn the opposite of what it was. So if it used to be up this high, now it's going to be down that low. So here's my new dot for that one, and then this one moves from up here to down there. And my new final answer I will make with a black pen is like that, that, that. Make sure this little point is to the right of the y-axis, otherwise you messed something up. This black one, the black lightning bolt, is your final answer. Okay, now I'll give you one last challenge, bro. See who can handle this one. There. Oh, this is going to mess with your head. Negative f of x plus 4. I think that'd be enough. Let's see if we can handle that. You can do this. Remember. If you get too confused, just take dots. And at the end, connect the dots. That's an important dot. Okay, first step. Should I do a vertical or a horizontal reflection? Vertical. Vertical because it's on the outside. It's a bow. Okay, so it's a vertical reflex. So that dot moves down here. This dot moves down there. This dot moves down about here. This dot goes underneath the line about that far. And this dot goes above the line about that far. And then I have to carefully connect my dots. That one's a straight line. Then this is a curve. That can be challenging. There we go. And then this last part is up. And then 
Where does it move from there? Left four is correct. Very tempting to move that up four, isn't it? But it's on the out. It's on the inside, and it's horizontal on the inside, so it's left four. So I'm going to grab this whole thing and move it over four to the left. Exactly how far is that? I don't know because we didn't label our graph. But generally, everything needs to move to the left some distance, and that depends on what you decide, decided four was. Raise your hand if yours looks something like that. Okay, awesome. All right, that's, that's the toughest kind of all, of course. But you just move the corners of it and then connect your dots. Okay, so your homework for tonight is reflections, day B. Evens again. I'm okay with you just doing a little less practice. We've been doing a lot of like practice things in class, a lot of practice problems in class. So we're doing good question. As always from now on, including I did mention this last time, if you have letters, multiple letters, you can't just skip a problem with multiple letters. You have to do the even letters within lettered problems. So let's say number one has part A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You're supposed to do the even letters on lettered problems. If the problem has only got one problem, problem number one is just one problem, you just skip number one, go to the evens. But do the even numbers and even letters. And I know that seems weird, but A is a one, B is a two. So B and D and F are the letters you should be doing. Yes? Just the even letters. So that'll help you and hurt you. Because like on a problem like number two, you would have had to have done all of them, right? But you don't now because you just have to do the evens of the letters. But if problem one had a bunch of letters, what I just said would hurt you because you would have think that, you would have thought, oh, I can just skip number one because it's odd. But you have to do the even lettered problems, which is like, nope. Whenever there's a letter on the on the page, wherever there's a letter, now whether it's an odd or an even, you have to do all even letters. If a problem is just simply numbered like problem eight, you obviously have to just do problem eight. But if it's got letters within problem eight, only the even letters. And if there's odd problems with letters, you have to do the even lettered problems there too. B and D and F. Okay. Any last questions on that? All right, that's all I have for you for today. I'll take a minute to try to get the get those uh, scores in the gradebook.